Hi everybody. Here we have the mate you like to the telephone I showed previously, the red one. Uh, this is this also is what they call a switching telephone extension, and this was used externally. Um, it's slightly different case, as you can see. Uh, nice it's not Bakelite it's um, the newer plastic well made again uh, the handset is the same model as the other one dial once again is Japanese very plasticky but it's it obviously does the job once again it's based on the, uh, the Western Electric uh, type of dial. Yeah, looking further inside, um, yeah I'm quite impressed again. It's a, a different bell arrangement to the other one. Um, nicely adjusted as well. As I say, I've took the dial out there so you can see underneath. You've also got on the top a ring button and that would operate those, those contacts there. So as you hold the button down, uh, it makes contact and it would obviously ring an external bell some, somewhere. It doesn't switch on or off, it only operates while you have it held down. Inside you've got the printed circuit board which is different to the one that I showed earlier. You've got your capacitor there. It's nicely laid out. Your anti-side tone induction coil. Looking further in, that is the coil of the ring or the bell. It's a single coil arrangement which they seem to do quite well with. As I say, it's slightly a variance to the other one as regards the bell, but nevertheless it's, um, it obviously does the job and works very well. Now, when we got the case, yes, there was. I'll show you the diagram. If I get it around the right way, let's try again. There we are. There's the diagram. It says external um, switching telephone extension external mark one V. What's that? Is that four or five? Well, I'm, not, I'm no good at Roman numerals, I'm afraid. Um, there's the actual circuit. If anyone wants to take a little copy of that, all they've got to do is pause the video and hopefully they can take the diagram down. There was something else I was going to say. Yeah, let me show you. The base now the the base of this phone is in metal. Turn it over without messing up things. Of course, I've got it around the wrong way. There's the base. There's these uh, plastic vent holes for the bell, which is characteristic on. ITI phones. There's the blurb. It's also um, I'm trying to think what the they've got one two two on there as well. Whether that's the model number, I'm not sure. It probably is. Someone's written that in in Indian writing. Don't ask me what it says. Don't know. But the part in English, I do know, and there we are. It 
Indian Telephone Industries, Bangalore. I would say this phone's probably the same age as the other one. There's no date on there. But that's what I would think, prob prob probably the 60s. Anyway, that is more or less it. Once again, thanks for watching. I'm hoping my little thumbnail pictures turn up okay. Uh, give you an idea what the phone looks like before I start delving into it, looking at the innards, which I think is the most interesting part. Funny enough, some people who collect phones go for rare colours, um, different designs. I'm just interested in mainly the circuitry, making sure that the casing is, is not broken or anything. Um, they, some of them can be repaired. But uh, yeah, so that's what I, I like to make sure they're all intact and they can be used. We see they've got the, the wires there showing e extra wires. Possibly this, this would connect to the, the external bell. And you've got your terminal strip down there. It's all interesting. And once again, the two bells are different. It's done for a reason, so you get a nice melodic sound. Anyhow, I'm going to shut up now. And uh, many thanks. Any comments, please make. Oh, by the way, the transmitter and receiver are the same as on the other one. Uh, they use the same type that we used on our 700 telephones. Um, all right, they may be made in India, but they are basically the same type. Anyhow, thanks again. I'm going to shut up. And uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.